I'm here on the bustling streets of Turin in Italy, and I'm here to meet somebody who grew up in poverty in Portugal, but who has become a global icon, somebody worth half a billion dollars, and somebody who is widely reputed to be one of the greatest athletes in sporting history. That person is Cristiano Ronaldo. And right now, this football hero is also the biggest star on planet Earth. But he's a private man. My job tonight when I meet him is to unpeel the layers of that privacy and get to the real Cristiano Ronaldo. It would turn out to be an extraordinary encounter. I have a very close friends, family, but who I trust 100%, maybe four persons. Wow. Messi is a fant he's fantastic guy, he's a fantastic player. Is he the best you've played against in your, in your life? I opened the heart for her, she opened the heart for me. Probably the... Um, the greatest love of your life. Exactly, this is what I want to say. 2018 probably was the most difficult year of my life in terms of uh, outside football. Sorry. What's the sadness for you? To be the number one and they don't say nothing. He never saw how great you no. became. I'd come to a launch event for Ronaldo's latest business venture, a perfume with a catchy title, Play It Cool. Ronaldo is one of the world's most marketable athletes. When he joined Juventus last year, he sold half a million football shirts in a day, worth almost a staggering 50 million pounds. Thank you for coming. Thank you, everyone. Nice sir. I've been ushered up to this rooftop. Ronaldo, I'm told, is about to come through that gate at any moment. Now, I'm trying to play cool. Hey. Cristiano, how are you? Good, and you? Good to see you. All good? Great to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All good? All perfect. You taller than me? I think so. Yeah, I think you may be. You're Dis six. Disappointing. Six one. What are you? Six two. <laughs> yeah, it's annoying. Already you have me. Christiana, <laughs> <laughs> please, let's go down. I'd been promised an hour with the great man, and I need to find out exactly what makes him tick. You, you nervous? No, I'm not. Sure? 100%. What do you hope to achieve from this interview? Good question. To speak about myself. You know, I'm not going to hide nothing. I'm not pretend to be another person. You're a brilliant footballer. You're obviously very famous. But if Instagram is the currency of fame, you're number one by miles. You have 182 million followers. Ariana Grande is second with 164 million. Kim Kardashian, Kylie Jenner, Beyonce. Lionel Messi only has 130 million. David Beckham only has 58 million. They're three times as big as David Beckham. When you hear that, it's, it's going to feel weird, isn't it? To be honest, for me, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, I know what I am. All my life, uh, what I did and what I do, it's because I have passion, for example. 75% of my life is football. Uh, the rest is, you know, my family and friends. And you, like, you like being number one, don't you, Cristiano? Yes, of course. I mean, you don't want to be number two, do you? If I sat here but and in, said, in if I said to you, you're the second most followed person on Instagram. Instagram, if I will be the third or fourth, for me, it doesn't matter. In my really? job, yes, yes. In my job, yes, I want to be the, the number one. Yeah. Fame is a very double-edged sword, isn't it? You know, I know that part of you, I can tell, loves the attention, the adulation, the fame. Being Cristiano Ronaldo must be, for a lot of the time, incredible. But there must be a lot of times as well when it's completely suffocating. You know, you can't really go out in Turin because the moment you do, there are thousands of people. What's it like, the reality of being you, good and bad? Piers, to be honest, it's boring. You have a part that it's fantastic, that you're famous, uh... You are a fantastic player, you win trophies, you score goals. You are on the first page of the, 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 the paper and television. But after 10 years, you know, you have to, you look the life in a different way. You have girlfriend, you have kids, you want some privacy. In the last 10 years, you know, my, my privacy is gone. I'm not gonna cry 
But if you ask me, I'm one year and a half here. You know how many times I'll go to the parking with my kids? You know? Tell me. Zero. Not once? No once. Because you can't. If I go, it will come like 20 people. The kids will be like nervous. I will be nervous. My girlfriend will be nervous. And when you are at public places, it's hard. You know, you have to maintain a little bit posture. If you put the, the, the finger in the nose, they're going to take pictures. You cannot be yourself, which is, is boring, you know. But what I'm going to do is it's too late to change and you have to adapt uh, what you are. Your great friend, Ricardo, said to me a great story that <laughs> on New Year's Eve in 2009, you decided to go out to a club. You want to go to a club. <laughs> and he showed us the picture. You went in disguise. I saw, it was a uh, new even, and I, I spoke with Rick. I said, Ricky, we have to do something. He said, we have to go to a discotheque. It's, it's new even, you cannot stay in home. And I said, yeah, but we have to find some way to go. Let's put a wig and mustache, a jacket, <laughs> something. And we buy uh, a, a wig with uh, natural hair. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Better than my hair. <laughs> and uh, we go out in a, one hotel in the center of Madrid. Like in, in the rooftop was a bar, discotheque. We go in the lift, everyone look at us. Who the fuck is that guy? Is this, <laughs> they look like uh, rock stars. <laughs> and we went to the, to the rooftop. And Ricky, we're going to speak only in English because nobody's going to know who, who, who we are. And the time that we went to the bar, I speak Portuguese with Ricky. I say, Ricky, what you want to drink? The only, the only time that we speak Portuguese. And one guy behind me, they say, Cristiano, I know it's you. I say, no way. This is not possible. I don't react. Inside, I feel like so bad. I feel like irritated. During the night, that guy, he told everyone in the discotheque, listen, that guy is Cristiano. And I feel, because I'm a tall guy, that everyone in the discotheque, they look at me like, but nobody knows that it's me. And we maintain the night. We stay there like two, three hours. We go uh, sleep. It was one of the best nights I ever had. Because you were free again. Yes. I feel free. I get that. You see, it's interesting, isn't it? The great joy you had was the freedom. And yet, for the rest of the time, it's like being in a cage, right, for you? A little bit, yes. I can say it's a little bit. Because you cannot be yourself 100%. How many people in the world do you completely trust? Completely. Completely, 100%. 100%. I'm not going to say names because I think it's not fair. But I will say four persons. Four? Yes. 100% trust, four persons. Wow. That's I have a very close friends, family, but who I trust 100%, maybe four persons, 100%. How do you feel about that number? Is that enough for you? For me, it's enough. I really don't thinking too much uh, about it, but it's the way we live. It's the, the life, it's like that. You, you know, you have to, to, to know that. Now, just to state the obvious, Ronaldo is pretty good at football. So good, in fact, he currently holds a ridiculous 145 footballing records. Most Champions League goals, most goals in all European competitions, the first player to score in every minute of a game. It's a very, very long list. I think you're the best football player that's ever lived. I think. Do you think? There's a raging debate, as you know. A lot of people think Messi. A lot of people think you. A few others think other players, but the two are Honest? You see yeah. honest? My honest thing is, I think you, very much. <laughs> that matters to you. Yes. Why? It's 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 beautiful, because you appreciate my job, what I my passion, what I what I like to do, and when you you listen kind of, uh, you know, people for example like you, it's nice. Make me feel proud. It means that you are you are good. You are uh, talent. You are the number one. Do you think what makes you different to the others, to the next rung on the ladder, if you like, of very good players, is the dedication level that you put in? I think I'm good, but I think my main st strength, it's my mind. 
I think uh, it's my strongest point, it's my mind. Pierce, the, the numbers, they don't lie. If you see during the last 15 years, my, my level is always kind of the same. So effort, dedication, work hard, because the talent is not enough anymore. And if you're not dedicated 100%, you're not gonna reach the level that you want. For example, you arrive home, you had a lunch, you do it a quick nap, and you wake up, you play with your kids, blah, blah, and I have, to do, I have to go to the gym at least 30, 40 minutes, but this will make the difference in the end of the day, you understand? If you, you not do it that, that work, you miss one. The next day, if you, it's two sessions that you lost, and I know in the end of the day, in the hand, they're gonna make a huge difference. This is why I'm 34 and I look 28. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm 54 and I look 67. <laughs> I'm also happy. And if Ronaldo's physical appearance is making you jealous, his lifestyle might just tip you over the edge. How many Bugattis? Two. Ferrari? Ferrari, um, two. McLaren? Two. Rolls? You came in a Rolls today. Two? Yeah. <laughs> two, 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 two. <laughs> You are apparently worth half a billion dollars. True? I don't know, maybe. I hope so. <laughs> that's $500 million. This, where is, you saw that? That's what I, my sources tell me. I don't, I, I don't think so. It's too much. What would you say? 300 million? <laughs> Probably. Three? I don't Four? Know. I you don't know. know. You know how much you're worth, don't you? You strike me as the kind of guy that would know that kind of thing. Not 100%, but. You know, I'm, what I can say, I have, I have good money in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I shouldn't don't say that, but, <laughs> but it's true. The truth is the truth. It's, it's the, the same. How many cars you have? I'm not going to say that I have two cars. I have 20s. How many, how many have you got? I cannot hide it, some, some things. How many have you got? 20s, maybe 17. I don't know. 17 cars? Yeah. And they, you got a, how many Bugattis? Two. Ferrari? Ferrari... Um, Two. McLaren? Two. Rolls? You came in a Rolls today. Two. Yeah. <laughs> two, 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 two. <laughs> Which one do you like driving most? Rolls Royce. The Rolls? Yes. The white one you it's gave more me? more the comfortable. Yeah? Yes, it's more comfortable and I like it. Not hurts my back, so it's, it's perfect. But a fleet of luxury cars and hundreds of millions in the bank is a world away from Ronaldo's childhood. He grew up on the impoverished island of Madeira, the youngest of four children, his father was an alcoholic and his mother worked as a cleaner and cook to keep the family clothed and fed. At the age of 12, Ronaldo left the family home and moved to the capital, where he was signed by Sporting Lisbon. He was given bed and board, but none of the riches that he enjoys today. I was surprised about this, but when you were a kid at Sporting Lisbon, you and your other little players in the academy there, you would go around the back of this local McDonald's and a lady called Edna yes. would give you the cast off burgers at the end of the night and you'd all take them and... Tell me about that. What, what was that about? What happened to Edna? Did you ever find her again? You know, when I was a kid, uh, at 11, 12 years old, uh, we didn't have money. Uh, and we live with the, in the same place that the other place, the, the younger places, because I live in Madeira and I look my family three in three months it was hard so very hard periods without the family and the uh, later night like uh, 10 30 11 we are a little bit hungry so we had a mcdonald's next to the to the stadium where we live and we always go to the to the back door and we knock the door hey any burgers left and edna and two more girls mm -hmm. which is they are Unbelievable, I, I never find the girls again. I, I speak uh, with some people in Portugal to try to find where is the girls because I don't find them. Uh, they, they, they close at McDonald's. But I hope if this interview will help to find that girls, I will be mm -hmm. so happy because, you know, I want to invite her mm -hmm. to come to Turin or Lisbon, to come to my house, to have the dinner with me. 
And I want to find these girls, to be honest. I want to give something back because that period was a period that I was appreciate so much. It's, a, it's something that you never, I never forgot that moment. A little thing, but it meant so much to you. A lot. Because you were on your own. You don't imagine how much, you know, to have burgers in the night. Uh, no, no, you're talking to the right guy. I know how much a Big Mac can mean at midnight. <laughs> you're talking to a man who's eaten a lot of Big Macs, and I crave them. So I get it, I get it. And this is where you and I have got such a similar routine. You know, two great athletes every Sunday gonna get a Big Mac. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, yeah, I can see you have good uh, abdominals. Thank you very much, Cristiano. <laughs> Thank you for appreciating that. I appreciate it. Something that gets a bit lost on the, on the you public. You look good, you look good. Thank you, mate, appreciate <laughs> it. You're looking good yourself. <laughs> Scrounging burgers is not something Ronaldo's four children will ever have to try. Ronaldo named his eldest son Cristiano Jr. But that's where the similarities end for a nine-year-old being brought up amongst unimaginable wealth. You know this generation, you have four kids, you know what I'm talking about. They have everything easy. They have computers, they have good food on the table. They're not sacrifice uh, a lot to get what they want. I want to give the best, I want him to suffer a little bit uh, to reach what he wants to be. To have the hunger that you had. I think this is, will be the most difficult part. You uh, took him back to one of your first apartments and very interesting where... The residence where yeah. I used to live, yes. With your, your friend and you took him back there and it was to teach him really about where you had come from, that you hadn't always had all this stuff. I remember I was in, was in Lisbon, very normal residence, I can say a poor residence. And I, I took him uh, to the residence, to the room that I used to live. The same person was there to working there in the building, incredible. Uh, and I see the, 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 the ladies and they start to cry when they see me. Uh, and I took Cristiano to the room, and I said, Cristiano, look, the daddy used to live here. And he looked at me, <laughs> you joke, no? And I said, yeah, no, daddy don't joke, I live here. And he didn't believe. He didn't believe because what he see now, he don't imagine what we sacrifice, the hardest time that he had, he don't believe. So it's hard, but I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna be uh, I know how to do it, to motivate him, to push him, but we'll be here. The difference will be here. I hope, I, I just pray that I want the mini Cristiano to be uh, like me, but no panic, no problems. You're gonna be whatever you want. I'm not gonna make a pressure, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see what's gonna happen. Let's talk about football briefly. You currently, have 145 records where you've been most first or only something in professional football. It's a ridiculous number. You're a team player in the sense you love to win big team competitions, but you also love individual awards. They matter to you. It's part of my sacrifice, my obsession to win, to have success. You know, when I mean, when I say success, it's I work for that. <laughs> Talent is not enough, you have to, I dedicate myself so much that this is part of me, records is part of me. I don't follow the records, the records follow me, which is, is different. Are you and addicted to winning? Yes, I am. I'm addicted to the success. Because it, I that's think the it's thing good. that really drives you. Yes, I think so. And I think it's not something bad. I think it's good, it's, it motivates me. If you're not, if, something that motivated, it's better, you know, to stop. You understand? The record's coming in a natural way. It's different. But when you are close, you say, why not? For example, this record now, mm. I think I had a chance to beat, and it's a beautiful record, the most top scorer in the world history. Of all the goals you've scored, I won't ask you to name the favorite. I'll tell you which my favorite is, for a number of reasons. It's the one you scored against Juve for Real Madrid. Mine as well. It's your favourite? Yes. We've got it here. <laughs> and it, what it meant so much to me, A, the technique of the goal is spectacular. It's a crazy goal. 
secondly, it's against Juve and the crowd reacted by giving you a standing ovation. And you went up to them and you beat your chest. And then here you are now playing for Juve. And I think it was all to do with that goal and that moment. Because Helps. you helped to see an opposition crowd responding to your genius in that way. It moved me and I'm not you, but it moved me watching that. Helps a lot, trust me, helps a lot. By far the best goal I scored in my career. Te technically, from your point technically, of view. Technically, the, the, the very difficult to do with that. I tried to score these goals many, 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 many years. I had 700 goals and I never scored a goal like, uh, like when this. When it went in, you knew you'd finally got it. What was that feeling like? Like, oh, finally, I scored a bicycle uh, goal, a beautiful bicycle and the jumping. Mm. I think I'd never see a goal with a bicycle like this one. The way I jump, against Buffon, mm. against Juventus, quarterfinals of Champions League, probably one of the best goals I ever seen in football. Not just because it's my goal. If it will be another player, I will say the same. Better than sex? Better than sex. Be honest, <laughs> be honest. Be honest. No. It was, wasn't it? No, with my Gio, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ronaldo is surprisingly open and relaxed during our interview, but the mood was about to change dramatically. Very emotional for you. Never, I never saw the video. When Georgina Rodriguez started dating Ronaldo in 2016, she not only had to cope with his extraordinary fame, she also became an instant stepmother to Ronaldo's three children, including twins born to a surrogate mother. They have since had one daughter together, creating an unusual but very strong family unit. Let's talk about Georgina, your girlfriend, who you've been with for three years. She gave an interview recently and she said that she wears sexy lingerie in bed every night. And she does that because it makes her feel good, but she said it also will make your man happy. So the obvious question, Cristiano, is <laughs> does it make you happy? No, it's funny, it makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. But she's a, a fantastic person, fantastic. She True helped. love for you? Yeah, it is. She, she is. said when you met, it was like love at first sight. You met her in a Gucci store and it was like magic. Yes, it was. Uh, uh, Gio is, you know, it's, it's, it's part of me. She helped me so much. Uh, of course, I'm in love for her. Uh, she's the mom of my kids. Um, and I'm, I'm so passionate for her, you know, it's, it's great. She's my friend. Uh, we had conversations. I opened the heart for her. She opened the heart for me. Probably the... Um, the greatest love of your life. Exactly, this is what I want to say. She said she would love one day, potentially, <laughs> to be Cristiano's wife. She would see that as a great honor. Why not? Would you like to announce now that you're getting married? Not now, not in this <laughs> interview. It's not the priority, but of course, why not? One day, I'm not... Uh, avoid that. It's, it's part well, hang of... Hang on, you're 34 years old. <laughs> You've got four children. You have been avoiding it. Don't make me pressure, You've please, been, please. You've been avoiding it. Come on, Cristiano. One day. I always said to my kids, don't get married before you're 35. You've got one year left. <laughs> then but, there are no excuses. But the doctors, they say I had 28, you know, my biologic age is... <laughs> no, will be, will be one day for sure. It's my mom's dream as well. So one day, why not? Your mom has been the rock of your life, Dolores. Yes. Uh, seems an extraordinary life force, but somebody always there for you. How important has she been to you? My mom was the, 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 the pillar mm. of the family. And um, what I have today, it's a bigger part from her. Maria Dolores dos Santos Avero is a force of nature. Wherever Ronaldo is, his mom is usually at his side. She lost her own mother when she was just five years old and was raised in an orphanage. 
She never remarried after Ronaldo's father died of liver disease due to his alcoholism at the age of 51. It's no wonder then she has so much emotion invested in her son. Your mom has to take sedatives before your big games. She can't even watch you play if it's a really big game. She gets so nervous. She gets so nervous, I don't understand why. <laughs> Uh, Can you do anything to calm her or not? More in the beginning, yes. Uh, she's not allowed now to watch uh, big games. Mm. Uh, I speak with uh, one, two friends to stay with her. She go a walk with her mm. uh, around the house because she, she, she gets so nervous. She's, she was a few times in the stadium and uh, she, she broke two times the teeth because she's, she's like so tense. What do we say when you get nervous and you... She fainted? She fainted in two times in the really? stadium. Yes. She's nervous. It's impossible. I cannot get I say, listen, I, I don't have father anymore. I don't want to miss my mom now. So <laughs> you're not going more the, you're not gonna watch more uh, games, uh, big games, uh, quarterfinals or semifinals or final. Go around. And she, she knew it as well that she cannot watch that kind of games. So I'm happy now. Your father, Dennis, he died of alcoholism, really. Um, the more I dug into his story, the more empathetic I got to him in the sense that he had gone as a very young man to war for Portugal in Mozambique and Angola. And the experience had a, had a bad effect on him, like he did on many young Portuguese men. When you learned more about what your father had had to go through, did you have more understanding then of why he became the man he did? Peace, I, I, I don't know. When I, when I speak about my father, I feel sometimes no words to explain why I, what it was my father. We found something, which I don't think you would have seen. It was an interview on Norwegian television where they just turned up at his house, a house I think that you'd, you'd bought him. 2004, the year before he died, and just before the big Euro final. And they just, Talk to him on the doorstep. And if you don't mind, I'd like to just play, of course. You, play you the clip because I think you'll find it very interesting. Family, popular, amigos, and all that. It's fantastic. I feel very happy to be able to do that. What did you say about your hometown in Funchal? Cristiano Ronaldo to Manchester United. Vou agora pedir lá os final, mas não vou, porque os negros são tão grandes que não dá, não dá capacidade para não. Ser, não, não fico muito atacado. Não. É melhor ver na televisão. Men moren fulle 19 år inn i Svå. Hun er hans nærmeste støtte og livvakt. É, é en dispensal, exatamente. É, 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 o, é o carinho que ele tem. E a mãe é um, é um guarda-costas que ele tem. Bem, é verdade, é um guarda-costas que, que, que ele tem. Está, está... Sim, sim. Tem que... Tem que... Very emotional for you. Never, I never saw the video. I never saw that video. Unbelievable. To hear your father speak about how proud he was of you. That must mean a lot to you. Yes, a lot. I think the interview will be funny, and, but I didn't expect to cry. But I never saw these images. I don't know where you... I have to have these images to show my, my family. But I really don't know my father 100%. He was a, he was a drunk person. I never spoke with him like a normal conversation. It was hard. Did he ever tell you that he was proud of you to your face? No, he, yes, yes. He said that 
It treated me unbelievable. I was like the diamond of the family. And he knew it. He knew it that I will be a, a football player. And for me, it's, uh, it's made me sad because everything... Sorry. What's the sadness for you? To be the number one, and I don't see nothing, I don't see to receive awards, to see what I eat. He never saw how great you no. became. No. What you could see from that interview was how much it would have meant to him, I think, was very yes. clear. He clearly had a huge part. Oh, my family, see, my mom, my, my, my brothers, even my old son, mm. but my father, they didn't see nothing. Uh, and it was, he died young, but it is what it is. I, maybe uh, I get everything in the football because he is in the in sky and give me... Do you feel that? Energy. Yes, I feel. How has it affected you, do you think, as a, as a father yourself? Has it determined the kind of father you wanted to be? The self-discipline that you have, the... You know, you barely drink, you never smoked or taken drugs or any of those things. You've, you've been very self-disciplined. Is that because actually part of you wants to show your kids that there's a different way? Yeah, I want to I wanna be a good father. I think I'm a good father. Nobody's perfect. I, I'm still in the process to, to learn. But I think I'm a good father. I, I, I took the example of my mom, my family, my father. I don't want to be a good father, you know. What, what are the values that your family has instilled in you, do you think, that you want to instill in your kids? They have to, to be humble. They, work, they have to work hard. They have to respect the people. You know, the basic points. And when you add healthy environment uh, around your house, the kids feel. And I want to be the most... Uh, cool guy, cool father, possible. Uh, let, me, let me let you into a secret. I have four kids. You won't be cool. You think you will. When you get to 40, 45, Finish. it's over. <laughs> you become the least cool. It doesn't matter if you're Cristiano Ronaldo or me. You cease to be cool. It's going to come to you. Yeah, I want to break it to you gently. It's part, <laughs> it's part of the journey. But I, in, in that situation, I will be prepared. I know the, the kids, they're going to grow, they're going to have a girlfriend, they're going to have a family. And it's good, I will be old, I will enjoy my, what I get in the football, and I will have, you know, a calm life, I hope. Cristiano Junior is nine years old. He's already a very talented young footballer. We found a great clip. This is after Real Madrid, I think in 2017, won the Champions League at the Bernabeu. Yeah, and this, is, Bell, yeah. this is Cristiano Junior showing off his skills at the Bernabeu there on that celebratory day. And you can see, I mean, he's... The flashes here are... They're like his dad. I mean, look at this. Fabulous. The dribble, the turn, the lethal finish. The skate, it's... It was like he's a mini-me, huh? I think so, yes. Ronaldo's obviously a doting father. But protecting his children from negative publicity isn't always easy. I feel embarrassed. I just changed the channel to don't, for Cristiano to don't see that they speak bad about his father, a, case, a very bad case. I've got to ask you about a difficult time in your life this year. It was, you know, you've had this extraordinary career and life and then you get hit by a serious story with lots of negative headlines and a woman accuses you of rape and it becomes Ronaldo, rape and so on. As we sit here, the police have just recently dropped that investigation into you. There is no criminal investigation now. Tell me about your reaction to what has happened. Well, I'm not gonna forget that 2018 probably was the most difficult year of my life in terms of 
uh, outside football. Uh, as you mentioned, that what they accused me uh, was very, very hard. You know, media, press, writer. They're not the part that make me feel sad because they play with your dignity. Um, it's, it's hard. You have a girlfriend, you have a family, you have a, a kids. It's bad, it's hard. I remember one day I was in, in home, in the living room with my girlfriend, you know, to, give, to do a zap in the television, to see the news, and they speak about Cristiano Ronaldo, this and that. And you, you listen, your kids coming down in the stairs, and you change the channel because I was embarrassed. It's like, what is that? I feel embarrassed. I just changed the channel to don't, for Cristiano to don't see that they speak bad about his father. A, case, a very bad case makes me feel so bad, Pierce, to be honest. But outside my house, it's something that you cannot control. When you called your mother to tell her the news that the police had dropped it, she must have been hugely relieved. Of course, especially my mom. You know, when you get old, and the information that media pass, it's not the real information. And um, especially for my mom. My mom sometimes was very nervous. I'd say, mom, relax. You know the, the, the son that you have at home. Relax, nothing gonna happen. Trust me. But she was nervous, she's old. She's, she's uh, nervous in, in the games. Imagine a personal stuff of his, Sons speak about jail, yeah. rape, this kind of stuff. It's, it's hard for an old person. But at the end of the, the day, it was good. The law, they did the job that should, they should do it. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm happy, of course. Ronaldo may finally be off the front pages of the newspapers, but it's a rare day when he's not on the back pages, where he often shares the sporting headlines with his arch rival. Barcelona's Lionel Messi. The two of them are so far above their footballing rivals, the Ballon d'Or or Golden Ball Award, given to the world's best player, has become almost a personal competition for them, with each winning five so far. Which is the one you'd most like to end up with as number one? Which record? Golden balls, for example. The most golden balls in the history of football, for example. Yeah. I will love it. And I think I deserve. As you mentioned before, Messi is a fant he's fantastic guy, he's a fantastic player. He's in his history of football. But I think I have to have six or seven or eight. You gotta be and the more one. above him, I think. Do you ever text him? I mean, do you ever like no, I have good. I, I, when I say in UEFA, many people were surprised my the way I speak, but my relationship with him is it's it's we are not friends or own friends, but we we share this the, the stage for 15 years. You know, I'm I have good relationship with him, and I know that he pushed me to be a bit a better player, and I push him to be a better player as well. Is he the best you've played against in your in your life? Yes, for sure. Did you ever think when you were growing up in a pretty poor part of Madeira, you, you weren't poverty stricken as a family, but you weren't well off at all. Your mum had to work really hard and you lived in one room with your three siblings. Did you ever think you'd have a private chef cooking? Never, food? never, never passed in my mind that I, I even have opportunity to play professional player, you know, to to play in sporting in Portugal, for example, and Manchester or never. What would you like your legacy to be, Cristiano? When it's all over? Football? Yeah, when it's finished, what would you like the legacy to be for Cristiano Ronaldo? How do you want people to remember you? One of the best players in history. One of or the best? Depend of the taste of the people. I cannot control what the people like. Some people like this player or that player. I'm sure I'm in history of football, what I did uh, and what I'm continuing to do. But one of the best players in history, for me, 
the number one in history, but <laughs> for some fans, the number one, for the other ones, the second, doesn't matter. I know I'm in history of football, one of the greatest ever. And when you have a tombstone, eh? when you die and you have your own tombstone, and, <laughs> okay. and it says, here lies Cristiano Ronaldo, how would you like to be remembered as a man? <laughs> you can write your own tombstone. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> Not number seven. Number one. You see, in the end, for you, it's all about being number one, isn't it? That's really what drives you. You don't want to be second. No. You don't want to be third. You I don't know this number. I don't know that number. There's one final thing I want to ask you, and this may break my heart. You know, you've shed tears in this interview. I might shed some tears. Well, I didn't expect it depends, this. It depends if what you say, actually, which is, I heard that there was a very good chance that you were going to join Arsenal before you joined Manchester United. <laughs> now, Arsenal's my team. Is it true that you nearly joined Arsenal, not Manchester United? It's true. it's true. Of course it's true. It's true? Yes. I was with Arsenal. How close were you? Very close. Like, break my heart. One step. Incredible. Seriously? Seriously. You were about to join us? Yes. And then we would have won everything? Well, I will, I will help. And then at the last second, you ditched my club and you went to Manchester United <laughs> and you broke my heart. <laughs> no. This is your chance to apologize. Yeah, okay, please. I'm so... I'm so... I want to apologize. <laughs> okay, forgive me to don't join uh, Arsenal. I have a gift for you. Okay. This is what might have been. Okay? This is what should have happened. This Fantastic club. is what I dreamed of <laughs> for the last 16 years, and it's not too late. I could see Aubameyang, Lacazette, Pepe, and Ronaldo, and you'd win everything. It's not too late. This is your destiny. <laughs> Come on, Cristiano. Make an old man happy. This is your Arsenal shirt. <laughs> Thank you. You like it? Yeah, this is nice. I mean, this is, this is what should Thank have happened. Thank you, guys. Nice. It didn't happen, but Arsenal, I, I appreciate what, what they did for me, uh, especially Arsene Wenger. But you know the football. The football, you never know what, where you're going to play. The life, it's, it's, it's like that, especially the football. But I, I appreciate Arsenal because it's a fantastic club and you, are, you support Arsenal. Now you support Juventus. <laughs> of course. They're my Italian but, uh, team. They're my Italian it's team. It's the Italian team, so perfect. So, it's, it's a good club, so thank you for the shirt. I will, I will keep it in a special place. Cristiano, it's been great to talk to you thank you very and much. to get to know you better. I'm, I'm a fan. I think you're the best player ever played the game. Thank you for the, you. Pl the pleasure you've given me as a football fan over the years. Thank you very much. I wish you all the very best with your career here in Turin, playing for Juventus. And I appreciate the time and the honesty you've given me. And thank you very much for, for your time as well. As I mentioned before, for me, it's a pleasure to give interview to you. I didn't expect that you're gonna make me cry. I think I never, I never cry in an interview. I think. But you know, it was a. It was I'm a, even a little bit embarrassed. I don't think you should be anything but uh, proud, actually, of what your father said was incredibly moving. I thought in my mind that I saw this video before, but that I was. I didn't saw that video. I never saw that video. So, surprised me because. Well, do you see my, my reaction? I'm but you know what it was? It was a human reaction. It was a son watching his father say how proud he was of his son. And Incredible. I'm a father, I have a father, and that's, if that kind of moment doesn't move you emotionally, you're not a real human being. To me, it was a very powerful moment in this interview. And it said a lot about you and your relationship with your father and how important family is to you. It is. This is why I, I did. I, I started to cry because I didn't control and it was very emotive moments for me. So thank you very much, Pierce. Cristiano, it's great to meet you. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. Really thank appreciate you. it. Thank, thank you. you, guys. Paula Grady meets more inspiring and remarkable children and great woman streets in Little Heroes this Thursday at 8.30. And it's the political exclusive everyone's talking about. If you missed it, the Cameron interview, catch up on ITV Hub.